Hey, Anna. How are you, darling? It's good to see you. And you too, Kay. Where's Phillips? He's gone to the movies. They're giving away an automobile. With tires? It was nice of you to let me in. I, how did you know it was at the front door? I heard the bell. But I didn't ring it. Didn't you? Well, then, I guess it was my imagination. Let me have your coat. Thanks. Where's Dad? He's, he's gone to the village on an errand with Dr. Haggard and Dunham. On a night like this? Would you care for something to warm you up? Well, I was on the wagon, but I think I'll step off and give my seat to a gentleman. Make it a weak one. That wind howl. Oh, I've got my goose pimples popping overtime. Ooh, it's a perfect night for a nice juicy murder. What's this about murder? Hi, Dad. Hello, Doc. Well, How are you, Dunning? How are the three musketeers? <laughs> Where the devil did you come from? Dad, that's no way to greet your prodigal daughter. I thought you were supposed to be staying with your aunt in Washington. Well, I, I was, but. Uh, well, when I read about all the trouble you're having with that mean old Senate investigating committee, well, I thought I'd better come home and see if I couldn't help. All right, what's the catch? <laughs> Isn't it funny? Dad always thinks there's a catch to everything. Come on, out with it. What is it? Well, all right. Now, watch your blood pressure. I'm, um, engaged. Engaged? What, again? Well, I'm not engaged, exactly. You see, I... I'm more than engaged, really. Now, how can you be more than engaged? Well, I'm married. Oh, well, make up your mind. What? Which is it? I'm married. Why, Kay, darling, that's one. Married, as if I didn't have enough trouble. Well, what's this idiot's name? Roger. Roger Blake. Dunning, get my lawyer. Dad, don't be silly. You can't sue a man just because he married me. He may have married you, but it's my money he's after. <laughs> Give me that. I suppose a man wouldn't marry me unless I had money. Not the last six no-account nincompoops you've been engaged to. Well, Roger's different. He works for the government. Dudley, why don't you at least meet Kay's husband? See for yourself what he's like. Why should I? Perhaps you'd like to give them honeymoon to South America. Maybe I will. All right, Kay. Trot him out. Where is he? Well, I, I made him stay in Washington. I thought tomorrow he'd drive up and you could meet him then. At least I'll have the pleasure of insulting him personally. <laughs> You're an angel with a shining halo. Thanks a million. That's probably just about what it's going to cost me. I know you'll like him. I'm going up and call him right away. <laughs> well, good night, everybody. Good night, Kate. It's good to have you home again, Kate. It's good to be home, Anna. And if anyone ever tries to tell me about how mean stepmothers are, I'll just tell them that I know better. <laughs> good night, Anna. Good night. My daughter is to know absolutely nothing of what happened in this house tonight. Is that clear? Yes, sir. I told him, Roger, darling, and he was an absolute lamb. When? Oh, but that's three whole days. Can it wait? All right, honey, if you think your business is that important. Good night, sweetheart. I love you.
Hey. What's the matter? Let us in, dear. Yes, dear. Open the door. Let us in. Oh. What happened? Oh, right. There, a ghost. I saw a ghost. He tried to kill me. Oh, no. A ghost. I saw him. He had a gun in his hand. Isn't any ghost in there? You must have been dreaming. Oh, I wasn't dreaming. He had a gun in his head and he fired at me. We didn't hear a shot. I tell you, he fired at me. He did. Well, if he took a shot at you, there'd be a bullet hole. And there's none here. There. You see, dear? It's probably just the store. You go back to bed, Dudley. I'll take care of her. Come, dear, try and get some sleep. I wish you'd believe me. He was standing right there in that doorway and I saw him. Don't leave me alone, please. told me he was dead. But he was dead. Then how the devil did he get out of his grave? There's a dear little plant that grows in our isle. Twas some Patrick himself sure that set it. And the sun on his labors with pleasure did smile. And with dew from his eye often wet it. It shines through the bog, through the break and the myrland. And he called it the dear little shamrock of Ireland. Oh, the dear little shamrock, the sweet little My. shamrock, the dear little sweet little shamrock of Ireland. Mike, please stop clowning. This is serious. you don't like it? I couldn't tell you everything over the telephone. Oh, what's it this time? You trying to snag a husband or unload one? It's worse than that. It's murder. Hmm? Well, anyway, an attempted murder. Well, go ahead. Let's have it. All right. I'll tell you on the way up to the house. Yeah, just climb right in, Miss Wolf. And I told Ed I'd seen this ghost, but he wouldn't believe me. What about the shot? Didn't he hear that? Nobody heard it, because just as the ghost fired at me, there was a terrific crash of thunder. Oh, what'd your dad say when you showed him the bullet? Well, that was the funny thing. There wasn't a sign of a bullet. You know, wait a minute. You say that this ghost took a shot at you and there was no sign of a bullet? Yes. <laughs> You sure it wasn't Cupid with his little bow and arrow? Mike, I'm not kidding. Uh-uh. I've handled a lot of screwy scrapes for you, but not this one. No thanks. Why not? For a very good reason. I don't believe in ghosts. Yeah. Now do you believe in ghosts, Mr. Shane? For $200, I would believe in anything. Thank you. You were saying, Miss Wolf? I wanted to call the police, but Dad wouldn't let me. In fact, when I suggested it, Dad almost had a fit. How come? Well, ever since the Senate's been investigating him, he hates policemen and reporters. Oh, what about private investigators? Well, that was one of the things I wanted to tell you. Mike, you can be my husband. Okay, but that'll cost you an extra hundred. Your husband? Hey, isn't this kind of sudden? Well, you don't understand. I'm already married. I was married yesterday, but Daddy hasn't met my husband yet. Oh, and you want me to take the poor guy's place? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'll still cost you an extra hundred, and that's wholesale. Three hundred dollars? That's my entire loan. Oh, you poor kitty. What, for a month, or does it have to last you a whole week? All right, you win. <laughs> now, you'll have to get some clothes and a toothbrush. No, no, not Michael Shane and company. His office is in his hat, his home is in his car. Take a look in the back seat. <laughs> oh, Mike, you think of everything. Well, that's why you pay me the extra hundred. second. Hey, what's the idea? This is the old custom of carrying the bride across the threshold. This service I throw in free. Da, 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 da. Oh, no, 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 no,
a silly custom anyway. Oh, hello, Phillips. Uh, this is my husband, Mr. Blake. How do you do, sir? Roger, Phillips. Hello, Phillips. Here, let me help you. You know, that's an extraordinary name for a butler. It's usually Jeeves or Hawkins. <laughs> Permit me to offer my congratulations, sir. Oh, thanks, Jeeves. Uh, Phillips. <laughs> Where's Dad? In his den, Miss Kay. Good. That's the best place to bear the line. Maybe I need a whip and a chair, huh? Oh, Phillips. Yes, Miss. Mr. Blake's things are in his car. Will you take them up to my room? Very good, Miss Kay. Mmm. Very, very good. Park that gleam in your eye, Mr. Roger Blake. <laughs> now, don't let Dad throw you. His roar is much worse than his bite. Oh, I see. Beneath all those millions beats a heart of ice, huh? <laughs> Dry ice. Well, here we are. You know, Roger's always very neat. Uh-huh. Oh, say. Does your dad like stories? I got a couple of pips no who just... No stories. No stories. This investigation, which is simply one more attempt on the part of the present administration to... Well, what is it? Uh, uh Dad, this is my... Uh, this is Roger, my husband. I'm awfully glad to meet you, Mr. Wolf. Kay was telling me... All right, Dunny. We'll pick it up later. Very good, sir. Mr. Blake, may I welcome you? Oh. Roger, this is my mother. Your mother? <laughs> you look more like sisters. I... <laughs> Thanks. I'm Kay's stepmother. You know it's... So you're Blake. Yes, sir. Of the Westchester Blakes. All right, how much do you want? You got it all figured out, haven't you, Pop? Don't call me Pop. Okay, Pops. But would it surprise you if I were to tell you that I don't want a cent of your hard chiseled dough? And the sooner you get that into your head, the happier our little family circle's gonna be. Member Dad, I told you Roger was different. <laughs> Mr. Blake, I understand you're with the government. Oh, yes, that's right, yeah. What department? Uh, uh, oh, I'm afraid I can't tell you that. That's a military secret. Yes, well, I don't like anybody who works for the government. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Pops, I mean, Dad, you know there's an awful lot of nice people in Washington. As a matter of fact, I might be able to put in a good word for you in that investigation. Why, you... Oh, come on, darling, I'll show you our room. Room? I thought oh, we'd arrange... Oh, I arranged... forgot to tell you that Roger and I have decided we don't want to go to South America. No, we thought it'd be much more comfy if we spent the first couple of weeks of our honeymoon right here. <laughs> and give you both a chance to get better acquainted. That's right. Well, it's been awfully nice to meet you, Mr. Wolf. Yes, sir. You and I are going to get along fine. I can see that right now. You'll excuse this, won't you, Mrs. Wolf? <laughs> you know, you've really been a great surprise to me. You're not half as bad as people said you were. I mean it. Well, see you later, Pop. Mike, you were wonderful. You're the first man I've ever seen really stand up to Dad. Now, don't build me up too much, kid. It's why I'm cost you an extra hundred. <laughs> It'll be worth it. I don't know. He's a pretty tough old cookie. Oh, don't be so hard on him. He's really very sweet. Oh, yeah? Well, so is arsenic. I understand it tastes just like sugar. <laughs> Taken care of Mr. Blake's wardrobe, miss. Oh, thank you, Phillips. Oh, oh, be careful of that suitcase, Phillips. That's been in the family for years. I can well believe it, sir. No sense of humor. Well, look what I married into. This is quite a playpen you got here. Hey, where'd you get the oversized army cut? Big enough to hold a rodeo in. Which side do I sleep on? Right in that guest room, Mr. Shane. It's a fine thing. A brand new bride telling her groom to sleep in the guest room. Why, in rule four of Emily Post... I go over the Marquis of Queensbury rules. Oh. Is that where you saw the ghost? Standing right in that doorway. Mmm. The mill have something to do with this? No. Uh -uh. Where does this door lead to? Well, that's the guest room I was talking about. Does that door over there open into the hall? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the ghost could have come through that guest room? Well, I don't know. But it's a cinch he didn't enter through this window unless he had a parachute. I see you got a burglar alarm system in the house. Oh, yeah, but it was such a nuisance, Dad had it disconnected. Well, that's great. Of course, the system lasts much longer if you don't use it. <laughs> if it was a real ghost, a burglar alarm wouldn't stop him. Yeah, All he'd have to do is just float through a wall or pop out of a faucet. Out of a faucet. Now, you say he stood here and you were in bed when he took a shot at you. That's right. About how tall was he? Well, I don't know. He looked about eight feet to me. And his stocking feet? He had shoes on. Oh, he had his shoes mm -hmm. on. 
Now, do you know of anybody who might have a good reason to kill you? Uh, no, not offhand. What about that Balkan prince you jilted last year? You know, the one that made all the fuss? Oh, well, he only threatened to kill himself, not me, too. Well, he's either very considerate or just plain lazy, huh? Say, you don't think Gregory tried to kill me, do you, Mike? I don't know. You gave him an awful runaround. Hey, look! I wonder when you couldn't find the bullet. It smacked into this loose knob and turned it around, see? Well, at least that proves I wasn't dreaming. Wait till I tell my dad a thing or two. You're not gonna tell your dad anything, young lady. Don't bark at me, Mr. Shane. We're not really married, you know. Yeah, lucky me. Can you get it out? Well, we're beginning to get someplace. It's a 32. And from an automatic. Now, all we have to do is find a 32 automatic. Say, what do you use for brains? Feathers? Now, what have I done? I don't know who should be sore, Roger or me. <laughs> I'd say Roger. Suppose somebody should see that. Then we'd be in a fine... Darling, I love you. I adore you. What's the idea? You make me so happy. I think you're the cutest, the sweetest, most adorable girl in the world. Shh, that door. Uh -huh. Roger, you're so sweet. And I'd rather be married to you than anybody in the whole world. Keep on talking, only try and make it sound sincere. My darling. Hmm? Promise me that you'll always love me. That we'll always be together. I didn't intend to disturb you, Mr. Blake. Oh, no. No, you as quiet as a moose. Mice, mice. I'm Dunning, Mr. Wolf's secretary. If I can be of any service, please let me know. I'll send up a flare. Who's that, Dumbo? Oh, no, Dunning. Well, he's been with Dad 25 years. I wouldn't worry about him. Oh, I'm not worried. He was just wandering by and got his ear caught in the door. Oh. Let's take a look at the rest of the house, hmm? Say, how about the servants? Do you think any of them might have played ghosts? Oh, no. They've all been with us for years and years. Of course, Dr. Haggard has them, but... Who's Dr. Haggard? Well, Dad has him working on some experiments. He's even fixed up a laboratory for him in the basement. Hmm. Let's go down and take a look at it, hmm? Oh, no, I think we'd better ask the doctor no, first. No, let's say we don't ask the doctor, huh? Come on. This is some little layout Dr. Jekyll's got here. It's cost Dad a young fortune. What, no electric trains, huh? Oh, looky. Hey, what's all this stuff for, huh? Well, Dad hates the idea that someday he's going to die. Simply can't stand it. Somebody must have told him to good die young. Go ahead. So, for a long time, he's had Dr. Haggard experimenting with methods to prolong life. Most guys are satisfied to live on borrowed time, but not your dad. No, he wants to buy it. All this equipment is supposed to give you vitamins A to Z in one jolt. Uh-oh. Here's something that's not supposed to prolong life. What is it? 32s, and most of them missing. Holy smoke. Then it was Dr. Haggard who shot at me. Ah, uh, take it easy, Kay. Take it easy. Don't get excited. Here, have a cigarette? Hmm? No, thank you. No? We mustn't jump to conclusions like that. Well... Have a cigarette, Mr. Bones? Don't care if I do. Oh, I saw your lips move. Sorry. There you are. Oh, I still don't see why he would want to kill me. Of course, I've always thought he was an awful phony. I've even told Dad so. <laughs> that gives him a pretty good reason right there. Oh, but that's too fantastic. Well, you see, maybe he figured that with you out of the way, he could go right on fooling your old man. Sounds logical, doesn't it? Hey, look at this gadget. Ah, a built-in radio. Maybe we can tune in on Buck Rogers. Oh, Mike, I, I'd get out of there if I were you. I... Oh, nonsense, my dear. Why, at high school, I was known as the young Steinmetz. All you gotta do is understand, electrics. Mike! Mike, look out! Mike! Mike! Mike, get out! Get out! Dr. Haggard! 
How do you feel? I feel just like a neon sign. You were very fortunate. If that voltage hadn't have been so high, you'd have been electrocuted. Say, if that's your idea of a practical joke, I don't like it. Practical joke? May I ask what you two are doing in my laboratory? Why, yes, sir. Uh, oh, by the way, Dr. Haggard, this is my husband, Roger Blake. How do you do, Mr. Blake? Well, maybe I better not shake hands the way I'm charged up. <laughs> Here, drink this. Go ahead, drink it. It'll do you good. Is my face changing? Well, you do look sort of funny. Oh, there's no change then. You see, I was telling Roger about the ghost I saw last night, and, well, we were just looking over the house. I can't imagine what my laboratory would have to do with your fanciful story about seeing a ghost. Oh, but I did see one. We even found the bullet. Oh, really? Uh, yes, and as a matter of fact, it was of the same caliber as the bullets we found in this box. Those are mine, I believe. Oh, you own a 32 automatic, eh, Doctor? Why, yes. Well, to be more precise, I did own one. You see, I lost it about three months ago when I was out target practicing. Hmm. Planning on joining the army? Oh, <laughs> shooting's merely a hobby. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to know, Mr. Blake? Uh, no. No, not right now. Thanks. Come on, Jake. Just what did I tell you about not mentioning this bullet to anybody? Gee, Mike, it just slipped out. Well, now, the next time it happens, I'm going to start charging you double. I'm sorry. Really, I am. <sighs> what are we going to do? I don't know. I guess we'll have to tell your father we found the bullet. We don't haggard will anyway. I'm glad you showed me this, Roger. Yeah, but why should anyone want to take a shot at Kay? I suppose I should have mentioned this earlier, but I didn't want to frighten anyone. Last night, I had a visitor. He was a partner of mine many years ago. Our association wasn't any too happy. I finally found proof. He tried to cheat me. To save myself, I pulled out a partnership. Well, what did he want, Dad? Money. For years, he'd been broke. Occasionally, I tried to help him. He was harmless. I felt sorry for him. Well, what happened? Well, last night, he wasn't satisfied with what I gave him. Demanded an outrageous sum. When I told him to go to the devil, he became violent. Blamed me for the death of his wife and daughter. Started to shout as if he were crazy. Threatened me and my family. Why didn't you call the police? Well, with this Senate investigation going on, I didn't feel I could afford the notoriety. But this man may come back again. I wouldn't worry about it, Kay. We've already taken the necessary precautions. You call the burglar alarm company, Dunning? Yes, sir. The alarm has been connected again. So you see, Roger, should our midnight visitor pay us another call, we're all ready for him. I hope you're right, but personally, I'm still a bit worried. <laughs> Naturally. Kay's your wife. She's my daughter. We both share an equal responsibility. Now, if you will excuse me, I have work to do. Oh, Mr. Blake, I hope Mr. Wolf's explanation takes care of your curiosity about my gun. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> my curiosity's always getting me in trouble. Don't give it another thought. <laughs> well, I guess that accounts for my ghost. Yeah, guess it does. That's okay, but suppose the ghosts were already in the house. Can't afford to take any chances, you know. Oh. Of course, it might be a little stuffy for us. Us? Personally, I don't need much air. 
I'll see you in my dreams. Well, how about it? Shall we go to bed? Oh, Mike. Do. Mike, what are you looking for? Looking for my slippers. Where'd Phillips put my slippers? Oh, here they are. Someone took you out of my arms. And, oh, oh. Still, I feel the thrill of your charm. Mike, you don't think no, that... No, I never think, honey. Lips that once were mine. Tender eyes that shine. Hey, wait a minute. What are you after? Say, is this a union-made mattress? Oh, I don't know. Oh. I thought not. And I refuse to sleep in it. They will light my way tonight. Good night, kid. Good night, pal. I'll see you in my dreams. <coughs> I take, I take, I take, I take. That does it, Jen. Jen. Discard. Oh, boy, did you catch me with a load of tomatoes. Give me that gun, you... Hey, who are you? I'm the caretaker. Did you see somebody running through here? Uh, no, sir. Uh, may, may I ask who you are, sir? I'm Mr. Wolf's son-in-law. Blake's the name. Oh, yes, sir. Did you see anybody around here earlier tonight? Uh, no one. No one. Mm -hmm. You sure about that?
Dr. Haggard. He's dead. What about the alarm? It didn't go off. Then the ghost is in the house all the time. Roger was right. Where is your husband, Kay? I don't know, but... Here I am, Dad. Where have you been, Roger? I've been out chasing the ghost. He got away from me. So where's Haggard? He's dead. Dead? Well, that makes this a case for the police. I better call him. No, Roger, I... Let him, Dudley. Let him call the police. We're all in danger. We've got to have protection. All right. Dunning, call the police. Right away, sir. Mighty important case. Yeah, I'm sure glad to be in on it, Chief. You know, I've been wanting to see the inside of Dudley Wolf's house as long as I've lived around here. How do? I presume you gentlemen represent the local constabulary. Who? No, I'm the chief of police, and this is Tim Larson, the coroner. If you'll come in, I'll show you the body. First case I ever covered where they had a butler show you the body. Follow me, please. I owe this, I'd subdivide it. What a beautiful funeral parlor this would make. Make a better courthouse. Would you care to question the servants now, sir? Yeah, yeah. Better get them all together. They're already assembled in the dining room, sir. Well, they are? I'm glad I thought of it. <laughs> yes, sir. Follow me, please. You folks know anything, you better own up right away. Wait later. It might not be healthy. Who are you? This is Mr. Blake, sir, Mr. Wolf's son-in-law. Do you mind if I sit in on the questioning, Chief? You see, I like to dabble in amateur detective work. I got a couple of ideas in the case myself. Well, I ain't running no school, but if you stand there and keep quiet, you might learn something about detecting. You? Where are you all night? My eyes have been closed since 8 o'clock this evening. Answer yes or no. But it, it, it yes. That's better. What do you do? <laughs> uh, nothing. Uh, nothing. I can guarantee that. I had a talk with him before you came. Suppose you let me do the questioning from now on. Mm. Hello, Peggy. Hmm. Peggy, I've got to ask you a few questions. Just be careful what you ask, Jonathan Meek, or it may be embarrassing for the both of us. Now, Peggy, uh, what do you know about this murder? You know as much as I do. Interesting witness, ain't you? Quiet, or out you go. Anything else you want to know, Mr. Snoop? Well, I guess that's all the questioning I'll do around here for a bit. I would think so. Where'd you say Mr. Wolf was? He's in the library, sir. That's all right, Phillips. I'll take the chief in to meet the folks. Come on, chief. <laughs> right over there. Can't figure Peggy out. She's been sore at me ever since I took her that Halloween dance last year. Yeah? Yeah, she forgot her mask. All I said was, you don't need one. Women's funny critters. You know, I can't understand why she should be sore. I guess all cooks are temperamental, huh? You first, Chief. Oh, wait. This yours? Sure, excuse <laughs> me. Dad, I want you to meet one of them, Chief. Jonathan Meek's the name, the Chief of Police. Good evening, Chief. Hiya, Mr. Wolf. I'd like to ask a few questions, if I might. Go ahead. Did any of you hear the shot? Yes, yes I did. They all heard it. Did any of you see who fired the shot? <laughs> well, my husband was the only one who saw the ghost. Ghost? What ghost? Well, you well, see, I don't mean the ghost sometimes she I had. do. What's the verdict, Tim? Well, he was shot just above the heart. Died almost instantly. Did you find the bullet? Was he shot with a 32? Oh, you... 
Uh, what do you know about a 32, ma'am? Oh, well, you'll have to ask my husband. Mr. So Blake, you own a 32? Uh, no, but uh, Dr. Haggard did. Oh. Well, maybe the deceased was shot with his own gun. Say, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I'm the one who'll be surprised around here, young fellow. <laughs> I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't... Ah! What's that? It's the burglar alarm. Someone's trying to break in. Ah! Trying to get in. Ah! Kate! Kate, get down! Chief. Oh, get out. You're always worrying about my hat. See if you can stop him. Take a shot at his tires. Sure, his tires. His tires? Those are my tires. Okay, forget it. Can't get any more. There's a shortcut right ahead. Maybe we can cut him off. Okay, say when. Right over there. Let go, will ya? Don't drive so fast. His head's caved in. He's done for. This'll make it official. No sign of breath. Deader than a mackerel. Well, I guess this winds up your case, Chief. You go get the corner. I'll stay here and watch the body. All right. My car. And my tires. seek with a ghost. <laughs> Same old Mike. Always talking in riddles. How's the detective business? Yeah, it's full of riddles. So you're still giving out with a Malini Malaki, huh? Finest in the world. Got me 14 weeks in this nightclub. All due to my new routine. Greatest yeah. thing since Houdini. Yeah. I tell you, Mike, I transformed three eggs into three full-grown hens. Look, you can... Now hold it, hold it, will you, Gus? Right now, I happen to be interested in an old routine. Oh. Three minutes, Malini. Thanks. Excuse me, Mike. I must hurry. Yeah. Here. Hold Casper for a minute. <laughs> you, were, you were saying something about an old routine? Yeah. Uh, did you ever do the Buried Alive Act? No, Mike, that's too tough for me. You have to master a trick called shallow breathing. 
And that's a talent that very few people possess. Well, did you ever see it done? Yes, I saw it done twice. Once by Houdini and once by an Assyrian illusionist named Zora Bay. What's his Zora Bay look like? Well, he's a tall, dark, effective looking man. Mm -hmm. Well, there goes my music. I'll tell you more about it when I get through with my act. In the meantime, make yourself at home. Thanks. Uh, you might find a couple of pictures of him in that scrapbook. See you later. Mighty slick piece of detective. Fastest job this country's ever seen, even if I do say so myself. A case like this might have gone unsolved for months if it hadn't been for you. It calls for a little celebration. I knew the minute I entered that house, the doc wasn't killed by anybody there. Did you say celebration? You'll be the most popular man in the country. Wouldn't surprise me if you couldn't be elected sheriff, especially with Wolf behind you. <laughs> it's going pretty far. <laughs> Why not? Here's the Mr. Wolf. Say, I can just see the headlines in the New York papers. Chief of Police Meek Traps Murder Maniac. Larson's Mortuary. Uh, yes. Yes? Follow you, the New York Bulletin. Uh, just one second, he's right here. Hey, what did I tell you? The New York Bulletin wants to talk to you personally. Yeah? Chief of Police Meek. Hello, Chief. Say, I understand you did a swell job on that Haggard case. Now, the Bulletin wants to give the story a big play. You know, pictures, the works. Oh, it ain't nothing. All in a day's work. I'd like to get a description of the murder for the next edition. Now, tell me, what's his name? Oh, uh, I haven't exactly found out yet. Well, could you tell me what he looks like? Oh, I'd say about six feet, weighs around 160 pounds. Sort of dark-complected, kind of a skinny guy. But mighty powerful. Most dangerous criminal I ever tackled. Think the story will make the front page? Oh, sure, sure. Big headlines, you know. Now, uh, tell me, what's the color of his eyes? <laughs> Funny thing, I never noticed that. Why do you want to know the color of his eyes? Well, you always got to know the color of a murderer's eyes, you know. Blue-eyed Dillinger, brown-eyed Floyd, you know? Oh, you're right. I never quite thought of it that way. <laughs> what's the color of the killer's eyes? I'll have to go look. Hey, you sure you got him there? Sure, I'm sure. He's dead, ain't he? I'm asking you, Carpenter. Go on, give me the color of his eyes. Yes, sir. Hold the phone a minute and I'll look. Shamrock, the sweet little shamrock, oh, the dear little sweet little shamrock of Ireland. The body's gone. Hello? Somebody's stolen the body. Oh, no, Chief, you wouldn't kid me, would you? Who would want to snatch at that body? I don't know, but the body's gone, I tell you. Well, I never heard of such insufficiency. Wait till I print this yarn. You'll be the laughing stock of 48 states. Blake in? Who shall I say is calling, sir? Mr. Blake. Mr. Blake? Whom did you say was calling, sir? Mr. Blake, Mr. Roger Blake. That's what I thought you said, sir. Would you mind waiting here, sir? I'd certainly like to know where that husband of yours is. 
Well, maybe he's been detained by the police. As a witness, I mean. I'm sure we'll hear from Roger very soon. <clears throat> Stop coughing, Phillips. What is it? It's Mr. Blake, sir. Mr. Roger Blake. Well, show him in. What are you waiting for? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, just a moment, Phillips. I think I'd better see Mr. Blake alone. Nonsense. Show him in, Phillips, and hurry up yes, about sir. it. Uh, Dad, I, I think I'd better tell you something. It can wait. But, Dad, you've got Some to let me Some other time. This way, Mr. Blake. Kitty Darling. How are you, dear? Get my telegram? Um, my business didn't work Roger, I... What is it, Kay? Roger? What Roger? Oh, pardon me, sir. You must be Kay's father. And this must be Mrs. Wolf. I'm sorry about arriving so late at night, but I thought that... I'm her father, but who are you? Dad, I tried to tell you, this is my husband. Your what? My husband. I mean, my real husband. Oh, no, Roger, don't look so troubled. I can explain everything. How many husbands have you? Kay. Uh, Dad, if you'll just listen... This I'll... better be good. That's all I've got to say. It was this way. Roger told me he'd have to stay in Washington. Hello, Phillips. Where's Mrs. Blake? Inside, sir. Good. Uh, pardon me, sir, if I may be permitted to say so. I don't think Mrs. Blake would like to see you at the moment, sir. Oh, nonsense, Phillips. She's always anxious to see me. <laughs> Hello, folks. Well, the prodigal son returns. Gosh, it's nice to be home again. I'm sorry I was so late, darling. How are you, sweetheart? Hello, Dad. Hello, Mom. What's the matter, guys? You'd think that... Uh-oh. Is it? <laughs> uh, I bet I know who you are. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. I've been trying to explain to Dad what happened, but he wouldn't listen. You explain who he is, but who is he? Who are you? I'm, I'm Michael Shane. And who is Michael Shane? A private investigator. Now, let me get this straight. You told your father this man was your husband. Well, we just went all through that. And Roger. that he worked for the government. But that was only because we wanted to catch the ghost. And that he even went so far as to spend a night in your bedroom. It was only an evening. And what do you mean by so far? What does working with the government got to do with spending a night in my bedroom? Where are you going? Wait. Find a lawyer and get a divorce. Now, wait a minute, pal. Don't let's lose our head. You'll lose your head if you don't take your hands off me. Uh, hey, Mr. Wolf, will you kindly explain to your brand new son in law? Get out. Oh, no, I wouldn't kick him. Oh, you mean me? Yes, you. Go on, get out. Oh, well, okay, just as you say, Pops. I mean Mr. Wolf. I, I never changed relatives so fast in my life. Well, thanks for the job anyway, Kay. I mean, Miss Wolf. I mean, Mrs. Blake. It's all so confusing. I'm sorry, Mike. But now that the ghost is caught and all, perhaps it's better that you do go. Yeah, I guess so. Well, goodbye, everybody. And uh, it's been, yeah, you yeah. Oh, hello, Chief. Hello, Mr. Say, did you find the body yet? Not yet, Mr. Blake. No? How'd you know the body was gone? You told me. Oh, I did? Mm hmm Oh, that's all right, then. When did I tell you? Over the phone. Over the phone? <laughs> well, that's right, I did. <laughs> Over the phone? Oh, you're that reporter, the one who's going to make me the laughing stock of 40 states. No, no, 48 states, remember, Chief? Meek. Chief, uh, Meek. Now, listen here, Mr. Blake. You made me Mr. Wolf's son-in-law. But you're tampering with justice. He's not Mr. Blake. And he's not my son-in-law. I'm not quite certain who I am. Hmm. One of them smart aleck reporters. Want to know the color of the killer's eyes. Uh, uh, Mike's not a reporter. He's a private investigator. Not a reporter? Then what? Then why'd you want to know if I still had the body? I just wanted to see if you're on your toes. You say the body's missing? Somebody stole it. Or else it just got up and walked away of its own accord. <gasps> Who ever heard of a body getting up and walking away of its own accord? <laughs> no, I wouldn't be surprised at anything that happens around here. Once before it was supposed to be dead. What do you mean, once before it was supposed to be dead? Oh, I just talking. Just a flight of fancy, that's all. Well, bye-bye, folks. Just a second, Shane. Yeah? I'd like to speak to you alone. Oh, is that so? That okay with you, Chief? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all right. What, whatever Mr. Wolf says. Uh-huh. You're, uh, you're sure it's not putting you out? Uh, suppose we go in your den. Very well. And maybe Mrs. Wolf would join us. Yes, of course. Fine. Don't you want me to, Mike? No, no, you stay here with the chief. Maybe he can help straighten you out with, uh, Jolly Roger here. Don't look so glum, chum. Excuse me. Oh, 
Dunny. Just a second. I'd like to have you sit in on this, too. Stay here. Sit down, darling. Now, Shane, I'm going to come right to the point. Just exactly what did you mean by that remark? What remark? You said that partner of mine was supposed to be dead once before. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. The first time was last night when you buried him in the woods. How did you know that, Mr. Shane? Oh, no. You see, a good investigator, like a good reporter, never reveals the source of his information. Now, I'll come to the point. Mr. Wolf, just exactly what do you know? Tell him, Dudley. He may be able to help us. You understand, Shane, that what I tell you is in strictest confidence? Let's hear it first. Well, that man was not my partner at all. As a matter of fact, I never saw him before last night. Well, who was he? Claimed to be a government agent. What do you want? Came to blackmail me. Said he had certain papers in his possession that would expose me to the Senate Investigating Committee. I asked him, show them to me. He took them out of his pocket, but that's as far as he went. I made a grab for them. He hit me. I hit him. My blow knocked him to the floor. Go on. And at first, I thought I had merely knocked him out. So I called him Dunning and Dr. Haggard. When Haggard examined him, he said the man was dead. Is that all? I've already told you why I didn't go to the police. What about those papers you grabbed? Absolutely worthless. If you'd like to see them, I... Dunning, get no, those... No, no, no. Sit down, Dunning. I'll take your word for it. Well, is there anything else? I've told you everything. Well, why did you and Haggard and Dunning here go back to the grave a second time? Well, I knew my daughter was telling the truth about that shot when I found a clump of pine needles on the bathroom floor. Oh. And you went to see if the body was still there, hmm? Yes. Is that right, Dunning? Why, uh, yes, yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. And was the body there? No, it was gone. <laughs> now, what kind of double talk is this? First you say you killed a man, then you buried him, and then several hours later he disappeared. That's just the point. I don't believe I killed him. Well, now, don't tell me that you're all beginning to believe in ghosts, too. Well, I'll admit, Shane, it sounds fantastic. Fantastic, huh? <laughs> well, that's a masterpiece of understatement. You know, I think you're just about as wacky as your daughter. I'm sorry now that I ever got mixed up in this. What you need is a Ouija board. I'm quitting right now. Please, Mr. Shane, you've got to help us. All our lives are in danger. No, no, this is a job for the police. Now, don't worry. Whatever I know, I'll keep under my hat. I don't want people to start thinking that I'm crazy, too. Just a minute, Shane. Where are you going? Oh, Chief, you're just the man I wanted to see. I thought you might like to know. I'm bowing out and I'm leaving all the honors to you. Not so fast. What about the body? What body? Now, no stalling now. You know what body I mean. Sure, of course, that body. I didn't quite get you at first. Well, uh, I tell you, why don't you ask Mr. Wolf? I'm sure he could give you some information. As a matter of fact, he might be delighted to confide in you. You think so? Why, well, certainly. Go ahead. Go right in. <laughs> oh, oh. I forgot again. That's okay, Chief. Dudley, what are we going to do? Come in. Mr. Wolf, about the body. Have you found it? Have I? Why, no, I thought you... Well, he said... Now, see you... here. I'm going to ask you to keep a particularly close watch tonight. If that body shows up, it'll be somewhere around this house. Yes, sir. Around this house? That's right. <laughs> well, hey, leave it, everything to me, Mr. Wolf.
will they? So, Robert, don't kill me. I didn't do it. It was Dr. Haggard. He double-crossed you. Please don't kill me. I'll do anything you want. I'll go away with you. I'll... Thanks for the use of the body. Don't move. Stay where you are, all of you. Hey, now. Go ahead and shoot. Bullets are all gone. You wasted them in the mirror. Anna! Anna! What happened? What are you doing here with that gun? I think your wife can tell you. He broke into my room. He tried to frighten me. You sure you weren't frightened by Zora Bay? Zora Bay? Who's Zora Bay? Yeah. Take a look at this. Go ahead, Mrs. Wolf. You better tell him. I'm sorry, Dudley. I should have told you everything long ago. I was married to Zorro Bay and worked with him in his magic act. He was on the steamship Morrow Castle eight years ago when it burned off the Jersey coast. He was reported missing. So later, when I met you and you asked me to be your wife, I thought I was free to marry you. But six months later, Zorro Bay turned up. He demanded money, threatened to tell you I was still legally his wife. Why didn't you tell me this? I loved you, Dudley. I was afraid to lose you. And you've let this man blackmail you all these years? Yes. But the last time he demanded such a huge sum, I, I was unable to pay. I was desperate. I told him to do whatever he wanted. So that's the real reason he came to see me last night. Didn't have the nerve to tell me the truth, so he tried to blackmail me with phony papers. It's all right, dear. It's all right. It's all over now. Well, Shane, I guess that finally clears up our mystery. Yeah? Well, maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't. What do you mean? Aren't you satisfied with my wife's explanation? No. You see, I happen to know that Zora Bay didn't return to this country until one month ago. Don't believe him, Dudley. He's lying. Mr. Wolf, ask your wife if she knows a magician called the Great Merlini. Do you know him, Anna? Yes. I do. And who is this Merlini? He's a friend of mine that knew Zora Bay and your wife. He gave me some very interesting information. Go ahead, Shane. Well, when Zora Bay returned to this country, he located his wife and found out that she was married to you. He also found that she was very friendly with Dr. Haggard. Zora Bay came to Anna and demanded money. She and Dr. Haggard agreed to put him in a position to blackmail you. How? Well, he was to try to frighten you with that set of phony papers about the Senate investigation. To get into a fight with you, you were to hit him, and then Dr. Haggard was to pronounce him dead, taking advantage of Zora Bay's ability to go into a trance, part of his famous buried alive trick. See, they had it all figured out that you couldn't stand the notoriety of a murder if it was to be made public, and that you would try to dispose of the body, and they were right. Then, without your knowledge, they were to arrange for Zora Bay's escape and hold his murder over you. But these two had already plotted to double-cross Zora Bay by really burying him alive, four feet under the ground. That's right, isn't it, Mrs. Wolf? It's a very neat plot. And it might have been successful if it hadn't been for that curious caretaker of yours. Once he was free, naturally, Zora Bay's motive became revenge. He came back to the house to kill your wife, but he got into the wrong room. That's why he took a shot at you, Kay. He came back the second night to kill Dr. Haggard. He found out that he hadn't killed Anna, and that was why he came back the third time. Where is everybody? I said, where is everybody? Well, you might at least give me a civil answer. What's the matter, you asleep? <gasps> why, who put that body out in the hall? Chief, congratulations. What for? Well, for solving the case. Say you did a great job. There. There's your prisoner. Well, her? Can't you see your name in all the headlines? Mysterious murder solved by Monathan Jerk. Oh. <laughs> Jeek. I mean, Meek. Yeah. Hey, you'll be wanting this. <sighs> That's all right. It's empty. Hey, why don't you be careful? I thought you said it was empty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did. I did. Well, I... So long, people. I'll, I'll be seeing you. Where are you going? Back to school to learn to count up to six. Mike. Yeah? 
You were wonderful the way you solved this case. Well, thanks. But how on earth did you get all those facts about Zorbe and Anna and Dr. Haggard? Mrs. Blake, a good detective never reveals the source of his information. Oh. Oh, I've been wanting to do this for... So long! Whoa! 